Hello, I'm Gary Jacobs, President of the World Academy of Art and Science. I'm extremely pleased to be invited and participate in the Third World Science and Technology Development Forum. I'd also like to congratulate the organizers on the initiative to issue an open letter to the global scientific and technological community calling for openness, trust, and cooperation, which the World Academy is very pleased to endorse. In fact, that letter harks back to the very origins of the Academy. In 1955, Bertrand Russell, Albert Einstein, and 10 distinguished scientists came forward to issue what became known as the Russell-Einstein Manifestation. It was done out of deep concern about the application of science and technology for purposes that were detrimental to human security and world peace. Much of it arose from the fact that many of the signatures had been directly involved in the efforts to develop nuclear weapons at the end of World War II. And the manifesto ended with this appeal. We appeal as human beings to human beings. Remember your humanity and forget the rest. The World Academy of Art and Science was founded five years later by leading signatures of this manifesto and others, including Robert Oppenheimer, who had been the director of the Manhattan Project that developed the first nuclear weapons. These were people who had seen the consequences of the work they had done and realized that it must never happen again. The Academy was founded in 1960 by eminent scientists affirming the social responsibility of science for public policy and, so, and its social consequences on humanity. It was constituted as a transdisciplinary organization, meaning we are not organized on disciplinary boundaries. We work together from many different disciplines in the sciences, in the arts, in the humanities, in professions, in public service to address global social challenges. And we're a transnational academy that is not directly related or obli obliged to any national government. We have over 800 members from 80 nations today and a network of centers and partnering organizations around the world. We also have uh, uh, consultative status with the United Nations, ECOSOC, and UNESCO. Our recent projects, which are directly related to the themes of this conference, are a project looking at global challenges in the 21st century. Another trying to see how we address those challenges through catalytic strategies, which we conducted in the last two years with the United Nations in Geneva. A global survey of human security, all dimensions of human security, conducted for the UN in New York. An upcoming conference, the fifth in a series on global higher education, looking at the changes that are needed in our education to support effective governance and leadership in the future. And a new project now being developed for a global campaign for human security. The world we live in today, the context in which we live, is one of unprecedented global interdependence, interactivity. Virtually everything is linked together as we see so vividly by not only the COVID pandemic and its spread all over the world, but the problems with, with supply chains when a shortage somewhere has impact all over the world. It's also a kind of unprecedented speed, complexity, and uncertainty. And it's a time when we see the growing imbalance between the speed, magnitude, impact of technological evolution and that much slower capacity of the society to evolve socially and culturally and the tensions that it creates. We also see more and more the inadequacy of prevailing conventional ideas about how 
our world should be governed, how we should, we should cooperate together. And this makes it all the more important that an organization, a conference like this, explores ways in which we can improve the governance of knowledge in the world, especially science and technology. As we all know, the world today confronts multidimensional global challenges, challenges to peace and security, political stability, financial stability, economic challenges to poverty, unemployment and inequality, food and nutritional security, the technological impact on society, problems related to health and education, and of course, most importantly, the ecological challenges of pollution, degradation of the environment, and climate change. All these put together show that we are at a time when we really lack, as a world, as a humanity, the kind of effective leadership we need to address these challenges effectively. We're struggling. There's increasing tensions. There's a breakdown of a lot of the trust and rapport and uh, cooperation that we saw uh, five or ten years ago uh, in an effort to tackle problems together. We have a vacuum. It's not a vacuum of individuals, per se. We have a very inspiring, dynamic leader, a Secretary General of the United Nations today, Antonio Guterres. But our institutions are incapable of the leadership we need. We don't have the appropriate coordination. We don't have the appropriate support and consensus among nation states to empower our multilateral system to do what's really in the interest of all humanity. The future demands more from us. It demands more than we're giving it today. And we must find solutions. It demands a much higher level of coordination between nations and between institutions, as we're trying to do in, with, with respect to climate change through COP26. It also needs more comprehensive and integrated strategies and policies, which recognizes the linkage between all these issues and all parts of the world and finds strategies to address them that are complete and whole. We also need to develop a greater understanding of global society and how it's developing and how it evolves. A transdisciplinary concept that understands the linkage between climate and pandemic and governance and digital security and economic development and social and cultural tensions and so forth. And we need a new paradigm in global education. And most important of all, we need changes in the way we think. Education, science, and technology are powerful levers for social evolution. Global community of science is the most trusted institution in the world today, far more trusted than the multilateral institutions, very much more trusted than national governments, big business, or the media. Scientists and technology are drivers of rapid change with enormous beneficial impact, such as the vaccines that have been developed in record time in the last two years to address the pandemic. But as we all know, technology is a double-edged sword. We saw in the 50s where the wonderful introduction of vaccines and antibiotics uh, that helped save tens of millions of lives in developing countries also resulted in what was not expected, a population explosion in developing the world. And that in turn led to food shortages and other tensions, political and social tensions uh, around the world. Today, we have the phenomenal miracles of digital connectivity all over the world. And yet we also know that the digital world presents new problems of security, even new problems of, of aggression between countries and between parties against one another. So it is our responsibility as scientists and technologists to not only understand the beneficial impacts of science and technology, but to also understand how we can manage them more effectively for the benefit of all. 
We need institutions today, not separate institutions that somebody does the research and somebody does commercial development and somebody implements it and somebody regulates it. We need to bring these functions together to see how the research, development, policy decisions, implementation actions, and evaluation of social impact can all be done as seamless parts of a single whole. Only then can science really play its right role, not only in the development, but ensuring that the application of our technologies has the right impact on society. Science has to rise above the politics and national interests and serve the security of humanity as a whole. One of the greatest challenges we face is in the field of education, in higher education specifically I'm referring to, because the education of our youth today is going to be a very strong determinant of the world we live in tomorrow, of our preparedness for the technological and scientific breakthroughs of the preparedness of our workforce, but equally importantly, of the understanding of the younger generations about the complexity of the world we live in and about their role as global citizens, their understanding of foreign cultures, their understanding of other perspectives, their willingness and eagerness to live peacefully in cooperation and harmony with one another. We have a quantitative gap because the present system cannot handle the hundreds of millions of young people who will be entering a higher educational age group in the next few years. We have a qualitative gap because even the best of our institutions is not even the top rated ones are not really oriented to understand the complexity of the world we live in. We're still too much organized along fragmented disciplinary boundaries, in departmental silos. In the US alone, we have more than a thousand disciplines and subdisciplines, each with wonderful specialized knowledge and expertise. We're becoming more and more specialized in our knowledge, whereas we need an education that more and more helps us piece everything together. Otherwise, how will our scientists and our technologists understand the social implications and the policy applications and consequences of the work that they're doing. We had a recent conference with the IEEE on artificial intelligence and cognitive computing, where the leaders of the industry agreed that the education that our young people are receiving today is mainly very much a technical education. It's not giving them the social understanding necessary to appreciate the impact of science and technology on society. And that impact is greater than it's ever been before. We still have a dominance of mechanistic reductionist type of thinking where we have to understand the reality of life is much more complex than the data that we can measure uh, and the information flows that we can track. And we have a gap between the prevailing theories such as our economic theories that are governing society today and the reality of their impact on society. We need a new paradigm in education. We need new leadership in education. To meet the quantitative gap, we need a whole new delivery system, no longer bound by the nation or individual institutions, but pooling all the knowledge we have and all the educational capabilities we have to deliver accessible, affordable education, world-class education to everybody. That's the only way we're going to equip humanity of the future to be prepared for the society of the future. We need an education that fits the real context of today and not yesterday not a decade ago, certainly not the last century. We've got to understand where we are today, not just technologically, but socially, politically, and how we're gonna address those issues. We need an education that breaks down disciplinary boundaries. We need an education that like the Renaissance 
integrated art and science and understood that the objective and subjective dimensions of reality are of equal importance, just as the ancient wise of China understood that yin and yang are not contrary op opposites. They're not contradictions. They're complementary dimensions of life. And that's the essence of wisdom, to know the whole and to know the place of everything in the whole rather than to know the parts separately from one another. We need an education that's person-centered, that focuses on developing people who think for themselves and can think on behalf of the world, think on behalf of others, and not just who are good at a technical or scientific problem or task. We need an education that's value-based, that along with whatever practical scientific knowledge we get, human values, human rights, and human security are of utmost importance. And we need an education that imparts to everyone, we are all global citizens, a knowledge of the process of social evolution and how we govern a world of increasing complexity and uncertainty. And we need to change the way we think. We need to learn how to minimize the side effects, unanticipated consequences, negative impacts of so many of the things we do because our minds look at one side of the problem and don't see it as part of the whole. We all need to be educated, to think in an integrated way, a holistic way, a comprehensive way, and see everything in its larger context. We need a much better understanding of the complexity of life in the social sciences, where life is much more complex than it is in the physical world of atoms and molecules. Uh, but we have hardly scratched the surface in grasping that complexity and how to manage it. We need a synthetic, integrated thinking centered around a concept that includes everything. The concept identified as the UN by the UN as human security. Human security that includes all the 17 SDGs from peace and human rights to food security and climate and employment and equity and gender equality. The World Academy in December will be launching the fifth in a series of international conferences on the future of education. And the theme of this conference is a new paradigm in global education for sustainable human security. It will take place online from December 6th to 8th of this year. I extend an invitation to all of you to please join us for the conference. This link will provide you with further information and an opportunity to register. Thank you.